Bonnie Dumanis, Nathan Fletcher, thank you so much both uh, for being here. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. So uh, San Diego County has a major housing shortage and most experts agree that this is one of the reasons why this region is so unaffordable for people at many income levels. The Board of Supervisors just recently approved a development in undeveloped land in North County uh, for more than 2,000 homes. Is this the kind of housing that you would support to help relieve the housing shortage? I'll start with you, Mr. Fletcher. No, I think what we need to do instead of instead of going into backcountry uh, in areas that aren't consistent with our climate action plans and aren't consistent with fire protection or water or transit plans, I think the way we need to address our housing shortage is to take bold and decisive action to increase housing uh, in the more urban areas, to do more infill, infill to do more transit-oriented development. Uh, we've talked about the creation of infrastructure financing districts. We've talked about the addition of auxiliary housing units. Uh, we've looked at really creative things we can do with county-owned property, uh, with the resources they had. You know, let's not forget, this is a county board of supervisors that had $150 million to build a Charger Stadium. They have the funding and the availability. What we need is bold leadership and action uh, to tackle the homeless crisis because it, it's not just homeless who needs homes. There's working class folks, there's workforce housing. Uh, we have a real need and it's gonna take someone to really push them uh, and lead them and drive them in a new direction to make that substantive change we need to address what is a very real problem. Ms. Dumanis, uh, homes in North County on undeveloped land, is this the kind of housing we need? Well, I think we have a housing crisis. The urban core, I think, is a good place to start because you have livable, walkable communities. You're close to uh, transit, so I think that's a good place to start. Um, but for the county, the county's land use is in the outer areas. So if we get 2,000 homes, I think uh, that would be wonderful. But we have uh, not enough homes to to go around, that's what part of the reason why we have a homeless situation. And so I think we need to do a lot of different things. I think the county needs to step up more and be a leader in housing. I think that we need to put some money from the unreserved uh, reserves and make sure that we help those that are doing affordable housing building with, with loans so they can leverage that. I think we need to steam, streamline the process so that it doesn't cost as much. 40% of the cost of housing is those regulations and that gets passed on to the consumer. San Diego's homeless crisis does seem to be getting worse, and last year uh, and part of this year it contributed to the deaths of 20 people from hepatitis A. What would you do on the Board of Supervisors to help relieve this homelessness crisis, Mr. Manis? Well, I think that Hep A kicked us all in the butt, and that's why people started focusing on homelessness. And I think it's great that Dan Shea and Pete Seidler you know, stepped up and made sure that they helped as well in the city of San Diego. So we have some temporary shelter now, but I see after the crisis, it seems to be people more and more on the streets. So I think we have to look at, number one, the, health, the uh, shelters as a first step, and then from there we need to have bridge housing, and then from there we need housing first plus, um, but we also have to recognize that there are people in the system that have mental health issues that we need to place into homes eventually that have wraparound services. And there are me there's mental health money that we can use for those wraparound services. And um, I've been working in the homeless area. I've been working in San Diego for 35 years uh, as a DA and a judge and as a prosecutor. And that's why Bob uh, McElroy from Alpha Project and Father Joe are supporting me because of my experience with them on uh, the homeless issues. Mr. Fletcher, how do we fix this house, uh, homelessness crisis? Well, the county hasn't been getting it done. Uh, the simple reality is there's a crisis that has been building over years and they've been asleep at the switch. You know, for almost a decade, they were warned that you had a hepatitis crisis coming and they didn't take action. A recent state audit showed they have about one half the public health nurses uh, they're required by law to have. And you have an all five Republican Board of Supervisors that's too busy voting themselves pay raises, offering money for stadiums, uh, and investing in things that aren't helping the most vulnerable among us. Last year, we stood on the steps of the county and put out an emergency action plan. And standing with me was a coalition that included state leaders like Todd Gloria and city leaders like Chris Ward and Barbara Bree, and included folks from labor business leader, community and faith leaders, and we called on the county to change their ways, to step out in a new direction, uh, to be bold, to hire the public health nurses they need, 
to commit to building the permanent supportive housing that they need to have, to open the inpatient psychiatric beds that they're licensed and authorized to open at their Rosecrans facility, to be a better partner with the city. Just a few weeks ago, Chris Ward and I stood at a vacant county building in Hillcrest and called for a specific plan of action on a piece of property there that's been vacant for over a decade. They have fences around the facility and they pay 24 hour security to stop homeless folks from climbing the fence going into the building. We said, tear down the fence. Let's create a recuperative care center, a step down facility. But there's been a lack of leadership and that's what I think we need now more than ever. When I was in the state assembly, we showed we could lead and things like Chelsea's law got a lot of attention, but I did legislation on homeless youth to try and alleviate that burden and help them. And that's where we need a new generation. We need new ideas. We need someone who's gonna really push them uh, to be accountable and make a difference. Mr. Fletcher, what do you think is the most important distinction between you and your opponent? Well, I think it's this notion of change. You know, Bonnie Dumanis has spent 30 or 40 years at the county, uh, really does reflect, is supported by all five of the incumbent Republican supervisors, um, is part and parcel of, of what's been going on there. You know, there's this great line that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the second best time is today. I wish 20 years ago the county would have been doing a lot of the things that now we say they need to do. I wish they would have been moving in a more progressive direction. I wish they would have invested more. I wish they would have taken a louder and stronger stand on things, and I think our region would be a better place. Uh, but I think in this election, we have the opportunity to bring someone who has governing experience, who's shown legislatively we can tackle big, difficult issues and deliver solutions, who's shown that outside of office, whether it's helping mental health treatment for our veterans or our deported veterans, but who comes in with that energy and drive to say we're going to move in a more progressive direction and we're going to lead and we're going to work with the state and we're going to drive solutions in a meaningful and accountable way. And so I think that we need a new voice at the county and I think it's time uh, after the last 30 years that, that we really start moving our region in a different direction. Ms. Manis, what do you think is the most important distinction between you and your opponent? Well, I think it's experience. I've been working in this county for 35 years. I've been a CEO of an uh, organization that has a budget of $185 million. Employees, a thousand. I was the top law enforcement office official in the county. And you know what? I don't even know how I got there. I was raised in a home that was a working class family. My dad was a truck driver. He was a teamster. My mom worked for WIC. I put myself through college. I put myself through law school. And I started out as a junior typist and rose through the ranks until I got to uh, the deputy DA. I was elected as a judge, and then I was elected as DA. And not only DA, but the first openly gay DA in the nation, and the first woman and openly gay DA here in San Diego. I've also been known as the most progressive in terms of criminal justice reform in the state of California. We have implemented and actually done bold programs. So I've walked the walk. I know what it's like to pick up the pieces for victims. I know what it's like to change the criminal justice system and be progressive. And I know how to save lives. And that's what it's all about. And that's what makes me the best qualified candidate in this race. Bonnie Dumanis, Nathan Fletcher, thank you both so much for being with us. Absolutely, thank you.